Hello everyone, welcome back. We know that it is very easy to execute any task asynchronously in Java, which can be achieved by creating new thread and running that task or a piece of code using that thread. That new thread will run separately from the main thread. This is the simplest example to demonstrate the same. In this, we have a task class which implements runnable and overridden the run method. That means logic written inside the run method can be executed using a separate thread. Let's visualize this with a flow diagram. First, the main thread will start the execution of main method. When the main thread encounters thread.start statement, it will spawn a new thread and execute the code written inside run method in that new thread. That new thread will be executing the code in parallel to the main thread execution. Now if we see we have some print statements written in the main class after thread.start statement also. Normally Java runs in the sequence of code written. That means first the starting lines will execute and once those executions are completed only then the next line will execute. But here when thread.start is invoked it will not block the execution flow there and wait for run method to complete but it will branch out a new thread and do the run method execution in parallel. In the meantime, whatever is written in the main method that will go on as usual without waiting for run method completion. Now let us run this code and see the output. Here you can see the execution of run method is done using thread 0 but the other statements written in main method are being executed by main thread. Also, you can see both the threads are running in parallel independent to each other. That means main thread do not wait for thread 0 to complete the execution before continuing in the main method. Now suppose there are 100 tasks that are you need to perform concurrently. And if you do not use any framework to handle thread pool or lifecycle, then the first thought that comes to your mind will be creating 100 threads using a simple for loop. Inside that for loop, you can create those 100 threads and start their execution. Now let's try to modify our this code so that we can create 100 threads using a simple for loop. So with this change, here we are creating 100 threads and executing them. What do you think about this approach? Is this a good approach? Should we create 100 threads or any number of threads required every time? The answer to that question is no, it is not a good approach. I mean you can create 100 threads, JVM will not stop you from creating them, but that is not at all an optimal solution. As we had discussed in one of our previous videos that thread creation in Java is not that simple. One Java thread corresponds to one operating system thread. Creating, managing and destroying the operating system thread is very expensive operation. Also, in addition to that, it is possible that the number of tasks that you want to execute can vary dynamically. That means once it can be 100 and in the next input it can be 10 or 1000 also. So every time creating same number of threads as input task is not a good solution. We saw how this problem can be fixed using thread pools where we have a fixed number of threads. If you want to understand how thread pool works, please check out this video from the channel. Link is given in the description and also on the top right corner of your screen. If we talk about executor framework, we will be responsible to decide what will be the size of thread pool depending on the type of thread pool that we are creating. Before we move ahead, let's change our code to make use of executor service. We will not cover the executor service in this video completely. That will be covered in this dedicated video with complete explanations. Here we are using executor service reference and that reference is pointing to an object of thread pool executor which is an implementation of executor service. Using this executor service we will be executing all our tasks with the created thread pool. We'll just tell the executor service that how many threads we want in the thread pool. In this example we have mentioned that value as 10. So using new fixed thread pool call of executors class 
we are providing the number of threads that we want to have in our thread pool and everything else will be taken care by the executor framework and here in the for loop what we are doing we are just submitting the task for execution using executor.execute and a new object of a runnable which is a new task and always remember to shut down the executor as well because if it is not required then shutting down the executor will help us reclaim the resources as well so here what we are doing first we are creating an executor object and after that using a simple for loop itself we are submitting 100 different tasks to this particular executor and this executor what it will do it will make use of the thread pool which we have created of size 10 and execute all those 100 tasks first it will pick up 10 tasks start executing them and as soon as any thread becomes free in that particular thread pool that particular thread will again pick up a task from the remaining tasks which are present in the queue and all these tasks will be executed in parallel to this main method let's try to execute this program and observe the output So if we observe the output, you can see first the main method started and after that the task in the executor getting started. So here you can see the name of the thread is coming from a pool. So this is a pool one which got created in the executor and these are the thread numbers. And if you see the maximum thread number is 10, that means only 10 threads are available for the execution and as soon as any thread completed its execution that thread will become available and pick up another task from the queue and you can also see the main method execution is also going on in parallel so now the big question is how to decide an optimal thread pool size there is no simple and straightforward answer to this question the thread pool size mainly depends on two things first the type of task that you want to perform and second the number of cpu cores available for the execution let's take an example to understand this suppose you have four cpu cores that means at a given moment your system can run maximum of four threads so from this it seems very obvious that we can set thread pool size same as the number of cpu cores well as i said earlier it is not that simple Number of cores is one of the factors we need to consider. Another factor that we need to consider is the type of task which we want to execute. Here we have two cases. One where tasks are CPU intensive, the other one is where tasks are IO intensive. CPU intensive means the code written inside the run method implementation requires high degree of CPU cycles for calculation. In this scenario, the ideal thread pool size should be equal to the number of CPU cores. So what will be the issue if we declare the thread pool size greater than the number of cores when the tasks are CPU intensive? Will it create any problem? Let's understand the real impact of such configuration. Suppose we have 100 tasks to execute and these tasks are CPU intensive. If we have 4 CPU cores, and we define the thread pool size more than 4, let's say 10. Then in that case, there are 6 threads from the thread pool which will always be in the waiting state and getting interrupted multiple times as there are not enough CPUs to assign to. Because these 4 cores need to manage those 10 different threads by giving time to every thread, a lot of context switching will happen which is a very costly operation where CPU switches from one thread to another thread for the execution. Thus using higher thread pool size in this particular scenario where the task is CPU intensive will have a negative impact on the overall system and application performance. So the ideal thread pool size is same as the number of CPU cores. In addition to that, we may also need to consider that how many other applications or thread executors are running on that particular system. In case more such components are already present on the system, then we may need to reconsider our thread pool size to some lower value. Now moving to the second scenario, where the tasks are IO intensive or maybe some external API calls are happening. In that case, we can have thread pool of higher size. Because for such cases, most of the time executing thread will be in IO waiting state. That means 
CPU will be free for other threads to utilize. For example, thread 0 went into waiting state due to some I operation. So thread 4 will be given idle CPU for the execution and similar for the other threads as well. So if we keep the thread pool size at some higher value, higher than the number of cores, then even though the threads are in IO or waiting state, still there will be tasks available for CPU to execute them from the queue. We also need to remember that making the thread pool size too high can also impact overall system performance. Because more the number of threads, more memory they will utilize. So overall, if we see for CPU intensive task, the ideal C size is same as the number of CPU cores, considering the other applications running on the server. And for IO intensive task, we can have high thread pool size, but we also need to make sure that not to set the size too high because then there could be memory related issues. So this is how we can decide an optimal thread pool size. In this video, we have discussed the need of thread pool and then various factors based on which we can decide the optimal thread pool size. In the next video, we will continue with executive framework and various thread pools provided in the framework. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.